Hey everybody, wanted to talk about next steps in your DLP journey today. Um, kind of where to go from once you've created a monitor only policy, what should you do next? How should you implement it? Ways to move forward. Some of which you might want to say, Hey, let's just jump ahead. Like it's being perfectly accurate, right? We can, we can move immediately to that like final stage of block. However, there might be some levels of, um, uh, implementation that you want to step through to kind of get your users used to having a DLP policy at start training them on not sending sensitive data out. Uh, and so we'll talk about that today and kind of hop in through it. All right. So again, here is the general stages I will typically walk an organization through when I'm implementing DLP, right? So we are in the monitor mode, right? This is where you should now have hopefully come to the conclusion that your DLP policies are hitting accurately or maybe we needed to adjust them or tweak them and you need to move up and down the accuracy level of the, the policy definitions, right? The goal next for you should be to move forward into this user education mode uh, and start informing your end users, getting them accustomed to seeing pop-ups or getting email notifications, helping them to make better choices with your company data, right? And that's kind of the goal with it, right? You you don't want to interrupt too many business processes out of box, but you want to start getting your end users used to using better ways of sharing that data, right? So maybe for you, that's going to be a, a Zix encryption portal or uh, office message encryption. In user education mode, we're simply telling people that, hey, you're doing something risky with our data uh, and here's a better way of accomplishing your goal, right? That's the way I'd like to think about it and kind of in that phase of it, we're just helping them you know, make better choices, right? Because some of it might be business processes that we need to, you know, we need to keep doing. Some of the DLP policies hits are, are accidental, right? The end user might not realize that down in the body of an email for, you know, messages back, someone had sent a credit card or a social security number of a customer. And then now when you're forwarding it outside the organization, that's when your data risk is hitting, right? So that's kind of the that's the user education mode, helping the end users see, hey, there's there's confidential data that shouldn't be shared out, right? Maybe it's a business process, but it's, a lot of times it's accidental. So education mode can help prevent the end user from doing that, sharing when it's not planned, right? And so that's kind of the goal with this. Um, obviously, you want to move all the way down this road, right? Education is great, but enforcement is kind of the end all be all goal with this. And we'll talk about these options. All right, so uh, that's kind of enough of slides. Let's kind of get into it and see like from the compliance portal, what should we be doing, All right? So let me pull this up real quick. All right, so here we have our Contoso monitor only policy. And you know, if we're happy with it, right, this is kind of, we're ready to move forward, uh, ready to implement next steps. Uh, what I'm gonna recommend you do when you're ready to kind of move forward is build a workload specific policy uh, as kind of your final end all goal with it, right? I tend to uh, want to target Exchange and SharePoint and OneDrive and Teams chat all of separate channels uh, or separate workloads to do the protection actions. Because when we go and build out our Exchange policies, if we're targeting a specific workload, we're going to get more functionality than say if we targeted a, a universal. Right, so monitor only, I like to target universal policies, turn on, hey, let's just do detections across the, the board. But when we start moving into the protection phase, we should um, you know, target one specific option. Or in this case, as we're moving into the user education mode, let's target one policy, one workload per policy, right? All right, so I'm gonna pull this one up and just use it as a reference as we're, we're building our policies. So here you can see, here is our monitor only, and let's go build our next set of policies for protecting our users. So again, back to policies and let's create our user education policy. Or really, in this case, I'm gonna create my final policy definition and this is gonna be the one I edit and you know eventually get into this block phase. So I'm gonna customize this policy here because we know from our other policy what the data we wanna do is and we're good to go with this. So in this case, I'm gonna target the exchange workload, right? We did our analysis and maybe exchange came back as the number one incident 
or where your DLP hits are coming from. Most most organizations, it's always going to be Exchange. Uh, but maybe it was SharePoint. We can target that specifically first. So we're just going to give it a standard name, targeting, hey, this is in this one workload. In this case, I'm going to turn off everything else in this. And at this point, we can target all users. But to be extra cautious, I typically will target a set of testing users, test the monitor only or the, the user education pop-ups, and then reconvert it back into this all users. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's pull up right the SGIT group. And I'm going to target that as my demo set of users to move forward. Okay. And let's go create these policies. So when I do this, I tend to have my other policies up so I can match kind of the the piece of it, right? So in this case, it was our low volume rule one. And so I'm going to pull this up and call this EXO low volume rule one. And then we'll build out the same definitions. Here you can see now that I'm targeting exchange, I get a ton more options as part of my conditions and actions on this. But I'm going to start with the same definitions before, right? So content is shared from my organization with people outside my organization. So as my content is being sent out, that's where I'm gonna hit my policies. And then content contains, and that's gonna be where we're gonna add our sensitive info types, right? So hopefully you did your analysis on this and this is all working correctly. We just simply gonna come in and rebuild this same policy uh, to, to match. So I'll go ahead and do that real quick. You always gotta, each of these interfaces are slightly different, right? In this case, you got to come up to the top, search, and then add in your uh, individual items. And so maybe we found out from our testing that, you know, the Microsoft definition of social security number wasn't working correctly for us. So we had to build a, a separate one. And maybe now in this monitor phase, we want to use the new definition that we did, right? And so we can do that, adjust this, uh, and maybe that's the change that we're going to see in our, our different policies. So you want to come in again and match your existing policies, what you got in here, and we'll rebuild this out. All right. So now we have this matching our old policies and we're ready to move forward with putting that education in place. All right. So let's build this out and we're going to turn on the user notification capability here. So this is where we can have education go to the end user, right? So uh, this is this option here. Notice that if I have the end user with a policy tip, uh, that's what we want to turn on. And so we can customize the email notification back to the end user, as well as the policy pop-up. Both of them are adjustable to match our needs. And you know what we can do is customize these options. So let's go ahead and do that. Love it when autocorrect doesn't work for me. All right, so there we go. So we've customized the policy tip to, to better match our uh, options in here, and, and we're ready to put this into mode. A couple of things that I would recommend doing in this is um, I tend to say with these DLP policies that Microsoft has detected sensitive data in this message, right? Uh, you know, instead of we have organization. I like to, uh, you know, put that it's a technology that's detecting this. Uh, you know, sometimes I might put Microsoft has automatically detected this. In this way, it helps your end users feel good about the fact that it's not you in IT or you as an organization that's reading their emails, looking at the data. It's that, you know, a system is coming in and detecting that there is uh, options in here. So this will be the message that we can do. Of course, you can customize the, 
the email notifications, but I'm going to just use the generic one uh, that comes with Microsoft. It's pretty good. And then the policy tip here, we're, we're adjusting it. I'm going to go rebuild the rest of the items so that it's uh, all set to go and we can start testing. All right, so I completed setting up the rest of this policy to match. I built again the low volume rule and the high volume rule. And let's just take a look at what I did here with uh, this again, All right? So uh, when this type of data is being, again, sent out with people outside my organization, then we're gonna start sending the end user notifications. We picked that we're gonna use the default email notification from Microsoft with email. Well, we can customize this later, it's no problem there. And then for policy tip, I went and re-wordsmithed it a little bit to, to use a little bit better language than my first take at it. And obviously you wanna match this to what's right for your organization, maybe you wanna give a little bit more detail. But in this case, Microsoft has detected sensitive data in this message. Please take appropriate security precautions while sharing outside the organization or remove sensitive data from the message. So I like to fill in for the end user what actions we want them to take. Hey, you know, take security precautions. Make sure you know who you're sending this to. Maybe again, it's accidental data share. If they didn't realize that there was a credit card. And so maybe they can remove it from the message. Maybe, you know, three messages down, it's not a big deal that they, they don't need to have that credit card in that email. So this is kind of those options we give to the end user. And then of course I set up incident reports because I want incidents to you know be showing up in my portal, letting me know about these sharing again. So you know again this will come back to start you know educating the users and start putting it up. So we'll go ahead and save that and move forward. And then when you get to this next test it or turn it out, there is a another test phase for us. We don't have any actions that we're taking on the email. We're not doing any blocking. So we're, all we're doing is user education. So at this point, I would say, you know, turn it on right away. Okay. And then final step is do that last review. So again, we are coming in and uh, we are affecting exchange online. We are targeting just that one end user and we have our two policies turned on and we're going to go ahead and create it. So let's go submit it and uh, we'll come back and start testing this and making sure it's, it's working correctly. All right, so our policies are all set. I've waited a little bit to get it up and running. You may need to take an hour break and, and come back for these policies to start working on it, but we're ready to test and see the user experience now. So in this case, you know, I've been uh, corresponding with Lydia here uh, about some, some project items and, you know, next steps of the project, send it to Doug to get an approval, right? So this happens all the time with the end users, right? So, you know, the, uh, in this case, you know, I'm going to go ahead and forward this out. And as I'm typing in, maybe there's an accidental Doug that I want to put in this. And so this is where, you know, the policy tip is going to come in and say, oh, you know what? Microsoft has detected data in this, and this is our notification that we're going to get for this end user experience here, right? And we're ready to go. Uh, you know, maybe this is the appropriate Doug. Maybe it's an autocomplete and we, we tab the wrong Doug, right? You're looking at this and you're like, hey, what, what, where is the sensitive data? Well, you know, what I might not have realized is that, you know, when we were originally talking about the project, you know, we had this in that other body of the message where we had the social security numbers and credit cards. And so this is that scenario, the accidental sharing that we really want to educate our users from, help them prevent, right? And so it's going to come in and, and kind of show this. Now, what if the end user sends it at this point regardless? Well, this is where the email follow-up is gonna come through and start hitting on this user or letting this user know. And here is that example, pretty quick. Uh, your email message conflicts with policy, organization policy, and then here is the details of it, right? The message is sent to people outside the org and the message contained, you know, no, uh, you know the, these sensitive data in it, right? So credit card and the US social security number item that we did. Now I do want to call out from experience with this type of notification going to the user. It can be a little confusing um, if the message went through, if any actions were taken. So you might look at this and say, great, this is perfect. Your end users might look at it and say, well, did you block it? Do I need to 
send this. Um, and so I do find that customizing this can be helpful to add clarity to the end users. And Microsoft tries to do its best to automatically do it, and they have some options there. Uh, but you might need to adjust this as you go to kind of create the cor correct messaging for your end users. So let's go show some of the options for customizing this. So we're going to go back to the DLP area, and I've already pre-plumbed this for us. So in this case, again, the verbiage that I tend to, to follow in a kind of not blocking mode or educating user mode is Microsoft, again, detected content contains sensitive data. Please try to limit exposure, yada, 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 that type of thing. Um, maybe give the end user another option. You'll notice that uh, we do have some variables that we can use, and, and that's how we can match that user experience of saying, okay, what was this data? We don't need to pre-program it in. We can actually use variables. And all of those are listed on this um, you know, site here of what it can do and how you can add in URLs to have it. So I just went and pre-plumbed that. A couple other things to note is that we can do full HTML in here. Uh, and so if you wanted to add company branding and links to your education page or maybe, you know, please use encryption is going to be a link to, you know, the actual directions or the encryption portal for you, we can do all of that as part of this. So um, again, you might need to adjust and you just kind of want to go from there. So you may need to go through um, several different testing phases with your test user group. Uh, to get this right, to get the right experience for users. And it's no problem to take a little bit of extra time at the front end of the project uh, to get you know, everything right before you go to production for your end users. Um, if you're ready to go to production, all you need to do to have this go out to your end users is go back into our scoping options and you know, apply this to the entire org. All right, so I'm gonna go do that right now. Um, in this case, again, I was scoped to that one, you know, IT distro group or IT test users. All you're gonna do if you wanna open this up and start hitting the rest of the org is now come into that and open this up and it will revert to all users and we're good to go. So again, double check everything before doing and submit and then you're off and running. So I hope this was helpful for anybody that's you know following along. Um, you know, There's a lot of capability that you can do with Microsoft DLP. And, you know, educating the users is a, you know, a really good step to be in informing them, helping them to make the right choices, uh, prevent that accidental sharing. And then, of course, if it's, you know, intentional sharing, you're getting that good visibility now with uh, these policies. So uh, if you have any questions, um, you know, feel free to reach out. Uh, probably next steps for me is I would, you know, start moving into that block mode. And I'll talk about that in the next video, moving into some of those workload specific actions you can take on a policy, like encrypting an email, blocking an email, and where those might fit in. So um, if you have questions, feel free to reach out. Hope this helped.